Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD, and today is all about deploying a network load balance on your Windows Server 2019 web server, and let's get to it. All right, so like I said before, it's all about deploying a NLB for network load balancer on the Windows Server 2019, and I am going to be configuring it for a web server. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my start menu, go to run, type in WinVER, hit OK. And I'm doing everything within a Hyper-V environment, but the host server is actually running Windows Server 2019 version 1809. OK. Now within my Hyper-V environment, I have four machines. Uh, I have my DC, I have Web01, Web02, and I have my NLB server. Now all the machines are part of my Active Directory. I joined them with my domain. They all live within the computer OU. Now I'm gonna show you guys my network load balancer server. This is it right here. I have no services installed. This is the Web01 server, no services installed. And this is my web O2, no services installed. On this video, I wanna do a lot of PowerShell command, a little bit of PowerShell command. I just don't wanna show you guys, go to manage, add roles and features, and next, 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 next. It's, it's time for us to upgrade our game and do a little PowerShell. And I'm getting myself into PowerShell a little bit more, so it's time for me to learn it and push it out to you guys. So I'm logged in within my DC. And within my DC, I am going to hit start. And within start, I am going to open up the Windows PowerShell folder. I'm going to right click on the Windows PowerShell IAC, go to more, and I'm going to click on run as an administrator. And it's gonna start loading up the Windows PowerShell IAC. And once it's up and running, it is time for us to get going, right? Now the first command that I'm going to run is invoke command with a dash computer name and the name of the computers that I want to install something into, right? Uh, it's going to be Web01 and Web02 with the following commands with wiggly brackets, install Windows feature, name, web server, and I want to include the management tools and then close the little wiggly brackets. This is basically, I'm running a remote command to those servers to install the web services. I'm going to select that command and I'm going to do F8 to run it and it's gonna run, it's gonna start the installation, and once it's completed, you should get a success. True, true, no restart needed, exit code was success, and the web server features were installed on those two servers. Now, if I go inside Web01 and Web02, we go inside the server manager dashboard, you're going to see the IIS feature, boom, it worked, awesome, right? This is better than just clicking on manage add rows and features, next, 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 and all that stuff, right? One command does it all, one shot, one deal. Now, if I click on start on both machines and go inside Windows Administrative Tools, you're going to see the Internet Information Services IIS was installed successfully, so that's a good thing. Now, the following command that we need to run is invoke command with a dash computer name, and I'm gonna call out my web01, my web02, and also my NLB computer with a command of install Windows feature NLB, also with a RSAT-NLB. That's basically going to install all the included features, all the added features that the NLB needs for it to be fully, you know, installed. So I'm going to select that command, hit F8. It's gonna start installing on all three machines. And once it's done, you're going to see this nice little prompt that the exit code was success and all three machines. Now, the next thing that I did was I went inside my NLB server, which is my network load balancer server. I clicked on start. I went inside Windows Administrative Tools and I looked for the network load balancing manager. I clicked on it. Once it loads up, I'm going to click on network load balancer cluster. I'm gonna right click on it, click on new cluster, and we need to provide our first host. Now, the first host is going to be Web01. Hit connect. If everything works out with no problem, the connection status should say connected and you should see the IP address for that machine. Now, before I continue, make sure that each of your machines have a static IP address, okay? Not DHCP. Make sure you go inside the network adapter and assign a static IP address to those machines. Each machine should have a static IP, a gateway, uh, also a DNS assigned to it, all right? Once you get to this point, click on next. We're gonna leave everything as the default and we're going to click on next here. 
And then it's time for us to create our cluster IP address. So I'm going to click on add. And from here, I'm going to provide the following information and then click OK and then click on next. And then from here, my cluster properties, I am going to enter a full internet name. This is up to you. Don't really need one, but I'm going to enter it. The next thing that you need to do is configure your operation mode. I'm going to do multicast for this example, and I'm going to click on next. Uh, you got your port rules. I'm gonna leave everything as the default and then click on finish. You're going to get the nice little hourglass uh, because it's pending. And once everything is completed, it should change green. The icon should change green and it's added into your cluster. Now back to my command line, I'm going to run the following command. Now within this following command, I'm not doing an invoke command because this command is within my DC controller, right? Invoke command allows you to do something remotely. On the command line, I'm going to do add dash DNS server resource record A with a parameter of dash zone name will be btnhd.edu for me, dash name, the name that I want for the A record, and IPv4 address will be the IP address of your cluster IP address. I'm going to select it, hit F8 to run it, and bam, good to go. Now, if you go inside your DNS manager, you're going to see that the record, the A record was created there. Now, don't get me wrong, you are able to open up DNS manager and right click on it and then go to a host and do it manually, but I'm learning PowerShell, so take advantage of PowerShell. You, you can script all this and do it in one shot. Why not, right? Now, the next thing that I did was I went inside the network load balancer server. I selected my cluster node. I right-clicked on it, and I went to add host to cluster, and I added my O2, my second web server, and I hit connect, and if everything works well, connection status should say connected, and you should see the IP address for that machine. Click next. I left everything as the default because the first host that I entered gave it an ID of one. The second one is going to be two. And then click next here. For port rules, I left everything as the default. Click finish. Again, you're going to get the nice little hourglass because it's pending. It's adding it to the cluster. And once it's done, you're going to see that green. From here, you are able to go inside your cluster properties. Right click on your primary cluster node and then go into cluster properties. From here, you are able to see your cluster IP address as well as your cluster parameters and your port rules. Now you're able to open up a web browser and just go 10, 10, 10, 100, which for me, that was my virtual IP address that I assigned to that cluster. And then long and behold, it goes directly to the website. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button. Do not forget about punching elbow and smashing that subscribe button to get the latest and greatest from this guy. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.